many uh, early career physicists move between temporary positions while pursuing permanent roles permanent role is something that gives them stability in terms of uh, focusing on big ideas or research uh, ideas which you know they want to pursue irrespective of you know worried worrying about the projects and you know the grants uh, especially this generally creates a stress uh, among the you know postdoctoral students at this age because the responsibility is also growing with age they have children now they have other responsibilities so looking back on your own journey what advice would you offer to early career physicist especially at this stage navigating the challenges you know it is difficult there's no question about it i mean i i remember you know, not at the end of my second postdoc feeling very much that i'm in the you know tunnel and i don't know the end is there light at the end or am i just going to be in just so that was definitely that feeling so i think i'm just saying this because uh, i did come out and so it is possible to come out of the, of the tunnel so people should not be discouraged if they feel that way okay Hmm. But in some ways, I think you have to have inner conviction. There's the inner fire that you believe in it in some way, and it is important in the sense that it's not just going to necessarily change the world or something, but it has a, it has a hmm. potential of making a deep impact. And hmm. uh, that I think you have to have that conviction and to to keep working on that thing. Right? I mean, it is difficult, and you correctly pinpointed the tensions. Basically, because there is no security, you go for two years, two years, two years, yeah. or maybe at most three years somewhere and such thing, and then what happens after that? We don't know that, right? What is going to happen after? That. And in fact, the standard attrition rate is really a factor of three. That is to say, one third of the students would get postdocs, and one third of the postdocs would get a faculty position. So it's only ten percent of the students would get a faculty position. So there is there is competition, unfortunately. I think it's good to have a healthy competition, but sometimes it becomes sneaky and this doesn't become very nice. And, but I think one should try to keep out of that and, and try to focus more on what is the best work you can do at this stage. Because there is the other side of the coin, which is that with security, your responsibilities mm -hmm. grow enormously. Because when you're a postdoc, you're free, right? I mean, you, you did not write the grant. Somebody else wrote the grant. Mm -hmm. And so you're not writing proposals at that time. You're not you don't have students to supervise. You don't have letters of recommendations to write. The, t the time of my life I spent on writing recommendations. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if I put all together, it may be counted in years. Because you know, I had the more than 70 postdocs, but 30 students, so there's 110 of them already. And, you know, they go through stages. I mean, a student becomes postdoc, postdoc becomes a faculty position, then there is a promotion, then there is tenure, then there is something, then there are prizes, then there is, and, and people, I mean, and for, for natural reasons, you know, people ask people in their 40s, 50s to write also for their senior people, those who have come to the senior level, and those things take time, mm -hmm. right? So, students yes. and postdocs don't have that. They don't have committee. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you're a department, you have to have committees, you have this, this committee, admission committee, syllabus committee, whatever committee, and it takes time to go through all those things, you know. If you, so I think that the best thing is to realize that even though one is feeling that, well, one has no security and so on, there's the other side of the coin, which is that you also don't have kind of responsibilities, which are huge things of time. And therefore, you can really take this time to dive into, you know, your idea, your ideas, and also question. broadening your intellectual breadth. I mean, don't don't be too narrow. You know, you should be reasonable. For example, I profited a great deal, yeah, so for students and postdocs by reading these authoritative biographies, not not junky biographies, but you know, like the on Niels Bohr on um, how Niels Bohr created the Bohr Institute. Hmm. Yeah. I've seen seen firsthand the archives and you know how those. Things are, are done and what happened to the history. Got to see Bohr's own office. And that one office, I left it as it is and did not change at all. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was very good for me to read about this thing. It was very good for me to read about Heisenberg's biography. And I often thought about myself and my, my colleagues as being extremely lucky that we did not have to make such hard decisions in our life. That, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's good. So I, I think it enriches you. When I was doing quantum gravity, I purposely went out and read about history of quantum mechanics. But so my, my statement is that, A, don't be discouraged. Yes, I mean, even people who have been very, very successful in uh, then, they also have felt that they were completely trapped and they were very concerned about future. Second is that, that focus on your work, and but also broaden out. Learn as much as you can in terms of techniques and tools and such things. And finally, 
you know, make contacts, right? Make contacts with scientific contacts yeah. with the, both your generation people because they will grow with you and, and also with the more senior people that you can, you know, go and ask questions and good senior people are always listening. Okay.